How do we know what we know? This is the most fundamental question of epistemology. It underlies all of science and may be the most important question you ever ask yourself. Your very ability to learn hinges upon how you answer this question. So in order to address it, I'm going to identify eight very bad epistemologies, and then I'm going to argue that you should embrace all of them. First we have the gullible idiot. He believes every explanation he encounters. I picked the QAnon shaman to represent this approach because QAnon is a classic example of people who gullibly believe every upsetting claim that pops up on their social media feeds. Second, we have the cynic. He will not believe anything unless it can be proven. I picked Descartes to represent this approach because he tried to doubt everything that could not be known for sure. And the problem with this approach is that many true things cannot be deductively proven. Many of Descartes' devotees end up rejecting obvious things like reality, and ironically embrace unprovable explanations such as the idea that the whole cosmos is a manifestation of the quantum wave function that happens to be passing through the mind of some superconscious being. Third, we consider the approach of the conservative. He believes the first explanation he has ever taught, and vigorously defends it against all others. I picked a Fox News host to represent this position because they're known for vigorously defending conservative views without giving serious consideration to alternative explanations. The problem with this approach is that one of the biggest enemies of learning is thinking you already know the truth, and the first explanation we encounter is very often not correct. Next, of course, we have the liberal, who quickly embraces the last explanation she encounters. I picked Oprah Winfrey to represent this position because she's always seeking for new and trendy philosophies. The problem with this approach is that you end up getting blown around by the winds of every new and unestablished theory. It's a breeding ground for pseudoscience and trending nonsense. Fifth, we have the approach of the authoritarian. He believes we should accept what the establishment says is true. I picked Hitler as a well-known face to represent this approach. The reason it's a bad approach is because authorities are often people who seek for power. And people who seek for power usually seek to maintain that power, so the truths they promote are usually biased by their agendas. Sixth, we have the populist. She believes whatever is most popular. I picked Barbie to represent this approach because, well, she's popular. The obvious problem is that the general public isn't always right. Once upon a time, everyone thought the Earth was flat. Yet, the Earth is not flat. So populism is clearly not always reliable. Seventh is the intuitionist, which I've represented with a Disney princess. She says, trust your feelings, follow your heart to tell you what is true, or choose to believe and that will make it right. The problem with this approach is that confirmation bias steadily leads these people off course. It's a recipe that almost always arrives at dogmatic conservatism and brings an end to learning. Finally, we have the skeptic, which I've represented with a scientist. He rejects everything that fails to meet his standard of empirical evidence. Now, the problem with this approach is that many true things are hard to evaluate empirically. When you need to make a real-life decision, sometimes the empirical evidence you need is not available, but decisions cannot always wait for science to catch up. So now that we've identified a lot of bad or insufficient epistemologies, what is the right epistemology? How should we actually seek for knowledge? How can we believe as many true things as possible while still rejecting the false things? What is the right way to learn, and how can we know what is knowable? I claim the answer to this question is an amalgamation of all of these approaches. Let's review them again, but this time instead of looking for the fault, Let's look for validity and see what happens. We'll start with the gullible idiot. Obviously, it's dumb to mindlessly embrace every idea that we encounter, but consider what Aristotle said. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Being able to give serious consideration to ideas we encounter is one of the most fundamental attributes necessary for learning. People who only have room in their minds to consider one idea at a time can never compare or contrast them with anything. So in order to learn, it is imperative to at least give temporary consideration to new ideas that we encounter. This does not only apply to the ones that seem right at first, it is especially important to consider ideas that seem wrong, 
so there is a big component of the gullible idiot in good epistemology. Now, if we're willing to give some consideration to each explanation we encounter, then the first explanation we encounter, by definition, will be the best one we have yet found for that thing. So in a sense, we really should believe the first explanation that we hear. So there is a component of validity in the approach of the conservative. But obviously, we should always be seeking better explanations. And because knowledge tends to advance over time, because science is progressing, newer explanations are more often correct, at least in some ways. So there's a component of the liberal in correct epistemology as well. But how do we prevent our beliefs from getting yanked around and blown by the winds of new ideas? Naturally, we challenge new ideas. This is the component of the cynic. When possible, the best way to challenge new ideas is with empirical evidence. Empirical evidence is the most reliable mechanism we have for determining what is true. So there's obviously a valid component from the skeptic. When empirical evidence is not possible, our intuition can be the best tool we have. It especially works well if we keep our eye on our cognitive biases and are always careful to admit that we might be mistaken. So there's a valid component from the intuitionist as well. If you want to learn, it's very important to consider as many perspectives as possible, so never get all your information from just one source. Therefore, there is a component of validity from the populist. And of course, not everyone in a position of authority is this guy. Sometimes authorities really are in the best position to know what is true. This is especially the case when they are established for their expertise rather than their ideology. Just make sure you challenge all the experts too, because all humans have biases. Yes, all of them. So there is a component of valid epistemology in listening to authorities. My grand point for this video is this. The secret to learning is to find the component of validity in every position we encounter. Notice that by seeking for valid components, we implicitly identified when each approach was appropriate to use. So instead of seeking to tear down our opponents, let us seek to understand them. If you cannot see the component of validity in each of these approaches, that probably tells you which ones you need the very most. We especially need to be able to find the components of validity in positions that make us uncomfortable or that contradict what we think we know. Never be complacent. Never imagine you know it all, you don't. Never lose your intellectual humility, never stop learning, and make everyone your teacher.